Except for being an impressively technical player, to me Frank Rossolino is also one of the most emotional. He always kind of goes all in. Yeah, I dressed up just a little bit today. You have to get used to playing in a shirt and a tie again. So as usual we're going to learn three phrases today. And the first is from a TV recording from uh, 62 I think that someone has uploaded to YouTube. If you haven't watched it, I'll leave a link in the description. It's really a must-see. The phrase is a bluesy one, and it can help us use that nice contrast between diatonic phrases and uh, blues phrases. So it's from the song Mean to Me. So you play a blues phrase like that, and then you go back to diatonic playing again. So Frank's phrase sounds like this. I've heard Carl Fontana play something similar, so I don't know who inspired who. But the A section of Mean to Me is very similar to a rhythm changes. So you have all of these uh, turnarounds, the tonic turns into dominant, goes up to the subdominant, and then back again. And I think that's why these blues ideas feel so natural. In a rhythm changes tune, these changes appear in the fifth and the sixth bar, but here they come a bit earlier in the third and fourth bar. So after the initial turnaround in C, we have G minor 7, C7, up to the subdominant, F major 7, and then through a backdoor dominant, B flat 7, back to the tonic again. And in the first bar of this phrase, Frank plays an uh, arpeggio. So in G minor 7, the arpeggio is. And Frank start on the ninth instead of the root. That kind of arpeggio is an essential part of the jazz vocabulary, so if you haven't moved that around in the keys, it's time for it. Especially in G minor, uh, F sharp minor, F uh, minor, this arpeggio just flows down like water. Beautiful. The whole phrase sounds like this. Now included in this blues phrase, uh, there is a turn. Most uh, bebop trombone players in the 50s and 60s used turns in some way, but Frank Rossellino goes to the extreme. <laughs> they are extremely articulated and they often use turns as an uh, effect. Without the turn it would sound like... And if you have never played these kind of turns, you use the... Oh, I can't remember the English name now. <laughs> In Swedish we say floors, you know, like... That's three different floors. <laughs> I will remember during the video, I'm sure. But you kind of play... The last bit of the phrase is also a turn, but it's more blurry and you can exclude it if you want to. Or kind of ghost uh, those notes. And uh, with the turn. This whole solo is uh, amazing, of course, and it's not very long. I think I will transcribe the whole thing at some point. But let's see if I can play this whole phrase in context. So hard with all those uh, turns. It's a beautiful phrase. So we talked about the similarity to a rhythm changes and it fits very well in uh, that context as well. So the most common key to play rhythm changes is the B flat. And if you play some sort of medium tempo tune, like uh, No Mo. Mm -hmm. 
Then you can mix it in uh, in the fifth bar, something like this. The next phrase is something most of us need to practice on more, playing fast. And in this case, playing fast in a slow tempo, so kind of a double time. I've taken it from this record, Free For All, not to be confused with the Art Blakey record. Frank plays a beautiful version of Stardust. And just in the start of the actual solo, he gets encouraged by the rhythm section, the drums mostly, to move up to double speed. So we are playing over a G minor 7 chord, and the phrase goes something like this, a little slower. It can be quite tricky to transcribe fast lines like this, especially on the trombone. I've slowed the phrase down, and I think this is what he's playing. But you also have to keep in mind that in these really fast tempos you are playing shapes, which can be more important than the actual notes, because the faster you play, the harder it is for the listener to actually hear the exact notes. First an arpeggio again. And here I choose to use the alternate positions instead of going into the first position. Because when you play fast, you don't have to move the slide as much. And then we continue to an enclosure of the minor third. And when I hear this phrase, it sounds like the idea and shape is almost this enclosure the whole way. You know, one of these shapes. But instead of continuing that way up, he goes up to um, the fifth. And here I'm thinking maybe in his mind the shape to come was supposed to be. But because it's so fast, <laughs> the notes you actually hear are... I've kind of written the D there as a ghost note. So instead of focusing on the D, focus upwards. The target is uh, the A. And then the enclosure again on the G. And then almost an enclosure on uh, the B flat. This is a kind of phrase, if you're not used to playing fast, this will require a lot of practice. So I like to mix the practice up a bit. Of course, start slow and uh, repeat and repeat, but you can also try to play the phrase without any tongue. That forces you to use the airstream in the best way possible. You can also just practice the fast notes on one note at a time. We go through all the notes in the phrase from bottom to the top. And when we get tired, we can play without producing any sound. So this will be homework for me for the next couple of weeks, I believe. Let's try it in a key a little lower, maybe E minor. The last phrase comes from a CD collection I bought back in the day called Kenton Presents, so a collection of different West Coast musicians. I love reading through these and uh, nice pictures as well. Here one on Frank. They play one of those musical songs that never made it into the jazz standard uh, library. It's a wonderful tentet uh, arrangement by Bob Cooper. And in this stage of Frank solo, it's 3-4 time. And here we are going to practice turns. Without the turns, the phrase sounds like this. <laughs> 
And funny enough, if you've seen the very first video on this channel, I introduced the concept of transposing phrases around in all keys. And I used kind of a generic phrase that you hear all the time in uh, slight variations. And that phrase and this phrase has the identical last seven notes. <laughs> so the phrase from my first video sounds like this. And compare it to... So that just shows how much vocabulary we have in common as uh, jazz musicians. Okay, let's... Uh, Add the turns. If you slow it down, you play kind of like this. After a while it feels more like you play a sound concept than this actual technique. Now if we change key to for instance the G minor, we need to think ahead a bit. The natural thing in G minor is to play this phrase uh, without the turns. But playing a turn from the second to the fourth on the same floor <laughs> is much harder than if you play the A on the sixth position instead, because that's on um, the floor above. So in this case I would play a lot to practice on here. A while back I made a similar video to this but with three J.J. Johnson phrases. And if you haven't uh, watched that one, it's uh, here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.